11's Activity 7 and Activity 8 get us to start thinking about Java abstract classes and some of the practical implementation about what it's like to, um, to start um, segmenting code so that it's more efficient. Let's take a look. By considering what an 11's, uh, what the Solitaire game that we've tinkered around with last activity, um, what it would look like to play, um, what kind of data needs to be tracked in the instance variables, and also what kind of uh, algorithm, what kind of methods are required to process the game mechanic. Um, so we'll, it's a helpful exercise to brainstorm these things and then to look at the code that we have and to see um, to see if if all of those items are here, is this does this have everything that we need in order to to play the game? Hope of this sort of exercise is to get you to start thinking about what's unique to this version of Eleven's a Solitaire, and what would be common among other variations of Solitaire. Instead of uh, selecting two cards that add up to Eleven's in order to get them off the board. Um, what if we played 12s or 13s or an entirely different type of solitaire? Um, what's unique um, to this version of 11s and what could be shared among a uh, common ancestor, a board? Start asking about like contains pair sum 11 and contains jack, queen, king. So let's take a look at them real quick. And we'll notice that um, contains pair sum 11 and contains jack queen king these are private uh, that's that's because they don't they don't need to be ever called outside of 11's board they're unique to this game um it contains pair of some 11 is analyzing a bunch of selected cards and seeing if they add up to 11. you don't need that in 12's or 13's solitaire um but if the question asks okay so these private methods they can only be called inside this class so what public method would be calling them? And uh, so then we can start thinking about is, is another play possible? And this is, uh, as, we can, as we'll talk about, this is an abstract uh, method that's coming from the board class and saying that, okay, a board, every game of solitaire will need to have a determination if another move is possible or if you have lost the game. So you need to see if another play is possible. And so we have here in the board, the abstract class, we'll have just a abstract method declaration. Because we know every game of uh, Solitaire will need this method, but it'll be unique to each version of Solitaire. So we just declare an abstract method, so it's a placeholder. There's no code block, it's just a semicolon. And thus, if we uh, connect an 11's board, and it's uh, we have that is a relationship, we have an inheritance that it inherits from board, then we will have to implement this code, and it'll have to be built out starting to just think about the difference between um, the in, the common uh, is another play possible which is a, something that will be common among all versions of solitaire and the private methods that will be unique to this version of solitaire um, 11s and so they're just starting to, uh, to get us to think through those methods okay now there's another unique mechanic about how this game is going to work um, that we need to also discuss. Two different instance variables that contain cards. A deck which has a card, has many cards, and this, uh, a, an actual array of cards. One is the deck of all of our possible cards, and this array uh, is, are just the cards that are on the board that have been dealt from the deck and are now visible to the player. Um, and the, the size of this uh, array is determined by an instance variable, um, board size. Uh, oh, sorry, this is, this is the one I'm looking for. So this, uh, we have a final, and that's why we capitalize this, because it's final. And that's just a, a rule that we write. We write them in all caps if it's a constant. 
Um, and that just helps us determine that this won't change. We can't change it during the runtime of our app. Um, so we have a board size. And so when our uh, game gets started, we instantiate our array that's to a fixed size. Um, that's those are the available slots on our on our um, board. And so oftentimes we'll need to gather up all of the uh, cards that are on our board and see if there are any plays available. But there may, if we're running low on cards from our deck and we're out of cards, as you get rid of cards, they don't get filled back in because we're running low and uh, you're close to winning. And so if we want to analyze this board, we can't access a card here. So there's a helpful method that if we look through it, helpful method is called, um, let's see, um, card indexes. And it goes through all of the cards on the table and it says, okay, if you're not null, so if the card at this location isn't a null pointer, and instead of pulling, pointing to nothing, it actually points to our heat memory where the six of clubs or the jack of hearts has been instantiated. Um, so if it's not null, then add to this array list of integers. So it's not, it's just the index number. So it's just this index number. So add to this array list um, what indexes are have cards on them. As this would process, we would have zero being written down in the zero spot of the return list, one, one, but we would skip this. And in this spot, we would have three, we'd skip four, skip five, and then we would have six, um, and then seven, and not eight. So we would have the cards that are there. Okay, correction. No, we don't have the cards. We have the index value here. And so as this uh, um, assignment has you practice, in order to access that card, that gets returned from this list, this code would never run because it's after a return statement. Um, but I would say, hey, cards, get the index location in that list. So if I did like for each loop of uh, integer i in um, selected, um, and I did a loop through that, I could print out the card at i. And so this is just this method only returns the index locations, the cards array of the cards that are on the board. And that's an important mechanic to understand as we as we start to loop through and check all the cards. Do any of them add up to 11? Is there Jack, Queen, King here? Is there another play possible? Um, are the cards that you have selected? A, is that a legitimate play? We're going to uh, need to practice that and we will be working with the index locations so we'll we'll need to summon the cards um, using that um, using the bracket and the index location given to us. Uh, 11's 8 um, we started to we connected them so now if I uh, take 11's board and now I extend if I extend a board class there's a few things that change for example, this 11's board, I no longer need this constructor the way it's written because my board class already has this. And so this code is in dry. This is repetitive. So I can get rid of this and I can just say, hey, call my super method, super method. So call my parents constructor and my parents constructor needs the size of my board. And that's just the board size. And then the rest is just the standard um, decks or rank suits and points value. So ranks, suits, and point values. It's all right here. And so now all of this is passed over to it, and that's my new constructor. And now all of these things, a new game, shuffle my deck and deal my cards, that's not unique to 11s. That's in my board class. I don't need it here. Um, and an accessor method for how uh, large my cards are on the table. That's also uh, can is common among all the boards. Is my are is the deck? Uh, I mean, are the cards that are on the table? Is that collection empty or not? That's also common. Same thing with a deal. 
Same thing with accessor method of my deck size, um, returning a card at a certain location. Um, that's also common. Um, replace selected cards, that's common. The card indexes method that we just talked about, that's common among uh, all uh, versions of Solitaire. The two screen method, also common. <coughs> is the game won? That's just saying, is the card, is the deck empty? And is every is the board empty? Well, if so, you must have won. Um, and so uh, that's so now all we have is um, is basic uh, materials defining our deck and how big our, our board is, and then a constructor that just passes that along um, to the parent constructor, and then we have ones unique to this version of Solitaire. Well, not deal, because that's common, um, but is another play possible? That's unique to the rules of this game. Uh, and then these private helper methods um, that are just feed into is another play possible or is the move you've selected legal? And we can see here that this one doesn't have a parameter coming in and this one does have a parameter coming in. So that means the board, if I press the button that says like remove these cards, it will pass along the index of the cards that I have highlighted on my board. Whereas if another play possible, I'll need to call that method that we talked about, that um, uh, card indexes, and it will calculate that and will return the cards that are still on my board. And then I'll loop through that uh, those cards, uh, or at least I'll loop through the index of those cards and pull each card and see if any of those uh, cards add up to 11 or contain a jack, queen, king. So I'll, we'll use these helper methods to see if another play is possible. But because there's no parameter like this one, I'll need to look those up. Okay, so that's all activity 7 and activity 8 re is really driving at. It's getting us to think about um, how this uh, class is set up, um, how we organized uh, the code, and to get us in the right mindset of uh, being able to start implementing this stuff uh, next time. So if you have any questions, let me know, um, but hopefully this gets you off on the right track with activity seven and eight.